Now this morning we continue our art exhibit series on now with oil portrait painter, Miss Natasha Gill. Natasha, good morning. Thank you so much for having me. Of good course, morning. it's a pleasure. I'm looking at your paintings on set and I want to jump right into it. But before we get there, tell me a bit about yourself because I understand that you went abroad to study. You spent some time in Caracas. Very, very cultural life. Yes. And so tell us a bit about yourself. So yes, we. Um, my family left Trinidad when I was 10 years old. My father got a job in Caracas. It was only supposed to last two years. Two years turned into nine, so I ended up spending my entire childhood and adolescence there. And then I went to study in Miami at Florida International University afterwards. Uh, I came back here after that, so I do have a bit of a well-rounded mm. sort of exposure to the world. And uh, because of that, I was able to study art both at secondary and university levels. But I didn't do anything like this. I did more sort of regular drawing and painting and ceramics and that sort of thing. Why did you return to TNT? Was it a choice or did you have to or how did the return happen? The return happened really because I wanted to come back home. I really missed Trinidad a lot. And uh, yeah, that was basically it. It was just time for me to come back. I'd been away for a really long time and uh, I missed it. <laughs> of course. Now you mentioned before that you did some sculpting, other types mm -hmm. of works, but here we have some of your oil paintings. Tell us how you got into oil painting. Well, so primarily my, um, my interest in art has always been drawing, and I've always particularly loved portraiture. And the oil painting part happened because basically when we were all locked in for COVID, I decided to do something useful with my time and try to pick up another hobby and try painting, which I had never been particularly good at. Mm. And again, I was having, I was struggling with acrylics, I was struggling with watercolors as I always had. And then I just decided to pick up oils and try that instead and boom. This is what we have. we have. Now, one of the very interesting pieces we have is Tiny Dancer. Tell me the inspiration behind that piece. Well, I used to do ballet when I was a little girl, mm -hmm. and I've always been in love with ballerinas. They make really, really great subjects to paint. So when I, I had come across this photograph on a website that offers free photography for people who want to use them for imagery, yeah. and when I saw that, I, I just said I had to paint her. So I've done quite a few paintings of ballerinas because I love them as a subject. <laughs> you love them as a subject. Now tell us the styles and techniques you use to bring these sort of, of work to life. That's a really good question. I think my style is something that's always evolving over time. Um, I think like most artists, I started out painting a lot tighter than I do now. And it's always a battle to try and loosen up your style. When you loosen up your style, it tends to actually have a, an effect of more realism. Mm -hmm. So um, these are like, this is one of my earlier paintings. The other two are a little bit later. And I think you could see that the style is a little bit different. So yeah, it's a constant evolution of basically challenging myself and pushing myself to do something a little bit different. And I understand you focus on portraits and we're seeing the details in the portrait because I know what we're seeing right now is jamming. Yes. Tell us why portrait as opposed to so let's say landscape or something like that. I've always been very fascinated by faces. I love to capture human faces, human emotions, char character, character in people. And um, that's always been a challenge, you know, because sometimes it can be very difficult to capture a likeness, to capture a fleeting moment of emotion mm. in a person's face. So that's really the thing that drives me and that's what I'm most passionate about. I don't really get excited about landscapes or still lives the way I do about people. Yeah, and I think we could see some of the details in Ravi, right? Because we're seeing the detail, that little moment that you mentioned there, it's in his eyes. Was there a particular uh, person you chose for this or was this a, a stock photo as well? It was another stock photo. And okay. I was just really, really charmed by the expression on his face. And to me, Ravi actually looked like a lot of boys that I grew up knowing. I grew up in St. Augustine in the East, and I knew a lot of boys who looked like him. I had boy Ds like that, too. <laughs> yes. So he just reminded me. He was reminiscent of my childhood. And there was something so cheeky about him that I just, I felt enchanted by him and I had to paint him. Yeah. Now, I also understand you are self-taught in some ways. What in your background or in your life you think helped you to just, you know, pick up something and be able to practice, practice until you, you actually get it perfect? Well, you said the word right there. It's practice, practice. Yeah. It's not the sexiest approach to art. It's not necessarily what people like to hear, but it really is a lifetime of mm. practicing art in many different ways that brought me to where I am now. It's just been hard work, really. Yeah, and of course the pandemic would have helped to bring this forth as well. Yes, because I had the unique opportunity of having 
no real responsibility job wise because at the time when the pandemic happened I was running an artisanal jewelry business and nobody was buying jewelry at that point in time and I didn't have anywhere to sell it so you know I had all of this free time I had no excuse but you know to just work on something that I was really enjoying and this was the result. Now, you are also, apart from being an artist, I know that you've won some awards, right? When doing um, graphic artist, uh, artistry, I would say, in and stuff like design, that. That yes. is not, that's amazing. Yeah, I, well, I worked for many years in advertising. I still do um, freelance work in advertising. And, um, well, it's, it's kind of par for the course, right. really, eventually, yes. because your work will get put up for awards and that kind of thing. So nice. I've won quite a few. That's amazing. You sit there so humble. I've won quite a few. <laughs> well, I mean, it's just something that happens after a while when you've been in the industry for a long time, you know. So I think it's it's a nice accolade, but at the same time, it's like everybody has some. Yes. <laughs> I understand you have a solo exhibition on I as well. I do. Currently, I have a solo exhibition that's on at Horizons. It's running until July 1st. Mm. I have 25 pieces there, so I'm taking up the entire gallery. Yeah. So where is it? Remind me. It's at Horizons, which is on 37 McGraw. Upper Road in St. James. Horizons. And what sort of work we can see there? Are we seeing similar portraits like these? My style for those pieces is a little bit different. So the work focuses, I did an all-female portraiture series and a lot of it is really um, very sort of fantasy based. I have women in positions where, as you see, I think in, we're seeing uh, on the screen. Right. Yes. They look bold. They look empowered. They have a little bit of attitude. It's a little bit of something for everybody, really. Yeah. I'm known for using very bright colors and using very feminine themes in my work. And the inspiration for this, because I realize it is very woman, sort of centered, woman empowered, yes. woman independence, that sort of thing. What was the inspiration behind those pieces? It was really my ode to womanhood. It was my, my ode to representing women in all of our many facets. And that's really what I wanted to do in the show. Do you think you will do um, a similar exhibitions in the future where you focus on a particular theme, let's say? I might, to be honest with you. As I said, I'm somebody who's constantly evolving. So, like, I can't even tell you what my next show would be about. I know it would definitely de be different from what I'm doing now. But who's to tell? I never know which direction I'm going to go in with my art. I just purchased a bunch of online courses yesterday. Wow. So who knows what the outcome of that new um, sort of avenue of study is going to bring me to. Do you think you'll go back to sculpting? Um, no, I, that, I don't no. think so. I mean, like, I have a lot of different hobbies that I indulge in when I'm not painting. Right now, I've been, I learned um, how to do book binding recently, so I'm into making journals and doing paper crafting, and these are things that I do on the side, embroidery, whatever, like, tickles my fancy. And usually when I've done a hobby, I usually don't pick it up again <laughs> after I've done, I've kind of perfected it, so it's always like I'm always trying something new. Yeah. Natasha, I think that's so interesting because you have so much creativity right just bubbling inside waiting to come out you know what i mean um what sort of if you had to think back at, at it what did you say or what would you say kind of you know prompted that sort of response to you always wanting to create a piece that could stand on its own well i think it stems from my childhood i was fortunate that i had parents who really encouraged me to sort of pursue my creative outlets. They recognized from the time I was very young that art and, and anything creative and anything that I could do with my hands was something that would make me happy. So they always fed that. And over the course of my life, I always picked up different hobbies to keep me interested because I always needed something to stimulate me. And um, yeah, that's the, the need to constantly be learning mm -hmm. is one of the driving forces behind my creativity. So that's why I could never predict what direction I'm going into because the next thing I learn might launch me into a completely new direction and I never know. Yeah. So that's the exciting part of it. So I'll save the question, what's next? <laughs> because I know exactly. you may have so many things on the agenda. But before we go, I mean, tell us words of advice. Give us words of advice, not just for the children who want to pursue art, but for the mummies who may be scared because they're, they're thinking that maybe art may not be a financially viable option for them. Well, I would say that Huh. People ask me this all the time, and I could only speak from my own experience. I think, um, first of all, if you do have a child that's creative, I really think that it's important to feed that. Um, creativity can be expressed in many different ways, and it's a really great outlet for me. It's something that's extremely like meditative and calming, so it's something that brings something to my soul as well as to my mind. Mm -hmm. and. 
and the expressive aspect of me. And so I think that's very, very important that if there are children out there that people see that part of them, they should do their best to encourage it. And at the end of the day, if your child wants to pursue, you know, anything that they're passionate about, they're going to do well at because they're going to stick at it and they're going to work hard at it. So, yes, it's scary if your child wants to be an yes. artist. I know my father went through that with me. <laughs> but <laughs> at the end of the day, I think as long as they are determined to persevere, then they'll be okay. And advice for children or students who want to pursue art as well. Um, study. I know it's not the, the most interesting thing about it, yeah. but yeah, you're going to have to study hard. It takes a lot of practice and a lot of hard work. Talent is just like a tiny fraction of what is necessary. There's a lot of work that goes into it. And art is also a business, and that's the other side of thing that people don't really understand, is that you have to study the business as well. And network, that's very, very important. Get to know other artists, get to know the art community, and let yourself be known. There's a lot of support found out there. Natasha, how can we find you? You can find me, um, so my social media handles are all Natasha Gill Art at Instagram, on Facebook, and I'm on TikTok as well. And I have a website, natashagillart.com. Natasha, such a pleasure uh, Thank you so interviewing much for you this morning and having me. you in the studio. Your artwork, the pieces are beautiful, and I can only look forward to see what else comes from you in the future. Well, so thank you so much. I will. It's at Horizons, yes? It's at Horizons. Good. Yes. I will come and check it out. <laughs> and that was Natasha Gill, of course, um, just showcasing some of her work as we spoke to her about her three pieces. Of course, we have Jamin, Tiny Dancer, and Ravi on set for the entire week. You're on the Now Morning Show. We're going to take a break, but stay with us because up next, we're talking Mixed Up, a new series coming right here to TTT. Stay with us. I'm dressing up in my red, white, and black. I don't care.